And hello and welcome to Hollywood Blockbusters. I am Joe Hollywood. And once again, I'm joined by Imaginos Pete. Hey, hey. And Andrew Walker. And Robert Butler. Thanks for coming back. Welcome back to the podcast yes. studio. We have Thank Robert back. Thank you for being back, brother. <laughs> we need your expertise. Yes, my pleasure. Because without you, we're just dumb guys. <laughs> <laughs> um all right so this is our uh what is it 96th oscar recap mm -hmm. uh it's gotta be. just a few years away from the 100th oscar ceremony uh we're gonna look back at the oscars from this past sunday uh we all agree that it was probably the most entertaining broadcast in a long long time yes. might have to go back to the billy crystal days to uh <laughs> Uh, find an Oscar broadcast that was as uh, entertaining as this. Uh, so what we're going to do today, we're going to kind of look at best and worst moments. We're going to go over some of the awards. We don't necessarily have to cover all of the awards. Um, and then just kind of share our pet peeves and gripes and complaints and compliments toward the end there. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the monologue, the uh, open, open monologue. I thought uh, Jimmy's monologue was a little weak this year. I thought he kind of took a page from the Ricky Gervais uh, Golden Globes uh, way of hosting a show. I, I thought he took an unnecessary jab at Robert Downey Jr., <laughs> bringing up his past drug habit. Um, and when they cut to RDJ, he was doing the let's move it along thing. And, I'm, <laughs> and, and, and Kimmel was kind of dwelling on it. And, yeah. and I'm doing the same thing. Like, come on, let's move on. This is this was such a big night for uh, RDJ, and it's like, let's in, not dwell on his past In the past opening mistakes. monologue, it's, uh, that's where I'm like, you know, I don't mind making fun of, but don't take the personal jabs in there. Cause that, yeah. And it's been done. We all know. It's not like Robert Downey did this just last week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. It, I mean, and it's a great success story, and yeah. I don't see anything wrong with acknowledging his, his progression that he's made. Um, but, yeah, don't dwell on it. Let him have his moment. Let him have his fun. Now, yep. when he got up later to accept his award, he kind of made some fun of himself, which he is allowed to do. Right. You, can, you can be self-deprecating up there. But, um, yeah, I thought Kimmel sort of went the Ricky Gervais route. Uh, you know, this isn't necessarily a roast you know, I mean, yeah, you're taking jabs at Hollywood and maybe it's deserved. Um, but come on, let's keep it light and friendly. Uh, there's another comedy made about Gerard Depardieu that I thought was in poor taste. Um, so right off the bat, I thought the monologue was kind of hit and miss. Did you guys, anything about the opening monologue uh, the, jump out? Yeah, the you? Gerard Depardieu, that felt a little like Dennis Miller. Like, yeah, I like the quote about Charlemagne. It's like, wait, what are you talking about? Like, where is this coming from? It's like the sword of Damocles hanging yeah. over my head. It's like, no, no one's going to get that reference. Like, why Stop am I taking it. a shot at Gerard? <laughs> I I mean, come on. He's sitting there watching going, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, I thought, I thought Kimmel's opening, you know, when it led off with some of the very early on before he got his feet, but he started taking some of the personal jabs in there. I went, okay, let's not, let's not have that type of Oscars right now. I enjoy making fun of the audience. Like it, it's good to poke fun of, but there's that, there's that line mm -hmm. that you kind of have, like all the, like Billy Crystal and you had to walk that line. Yeah. And some of the great hosts in the past, Steve Martin, you had to walk that line. Yeah. So you, you, you make fun of, but you don't, you don't cross that line, especially not, not in the Oscars, not right, yeah. not right away. But he had some great moments, like later on in the show. There were some funny bits. The John, oh, yeah. The John we'll we'll, the, yeah, we'll right. get to some of the opening those monologue. Later. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I was a little disappointed because I don't know if you guys saw, there was a, uh, a very elaborate teaser that was produced prior to the Oscars. Yes. Where it involved uh, Barbie and Ryan Gosling and Jimmy was in there and, and Kate McKinnon. And I'm like, this is amazing. Is this a taste of what we're going to get That's, for the. That used to be yeah. Crystal. And then, yeah. Sure. And then. They did just a few yeah. seconds of that, and then they went right into the live they, monologue. And I'm like, oh, I wanted more of that. I remember the one with John Stewart where they kept going through all the hosts, and then they, they would go through movie phone. Movie phone is not interested. And then oh, when they yeah, finally I landed on that, John yeah. Stewart, they went through everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, Whoopi Goldberg opens the door. Oh, hell no. And then she closes the door, so they finally landed on John Stewart. And he goes, well, I guess it's me. Now, early on, uh, Kimmel said, uh, we're running five minutes behind. And then he said, seriously, we are running five minutes behind. And I just learned today that apparently there were protests outside the uh, Kodak 
theater, the Dolby Theater, and uh, people were protesting, a, you know, the ceasefire in, in Palestine or Hamas or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that delayed entry to the, uh, to the facility. So that kind of is why we're sitting there on the couch going, how come we're not in the auditorium yet? Okay. So, so politics got in the way of an a, a on-time start. Uh, so we get into the monologue. Um, and like I said, it was hit and miss. One thing I did think it was that was kind of cool is the fact that, you know, Detroit is a union town. And toward the end of the monologue, yeah. Jimmy went pro-union. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And yep. showed support for the writers and the actors and, and the, the, the little people that make movies. And I, I thought that was a, a pretty great moment. And it yeah, almost it got drowned out in the applause, but the uh, it's a IATSC. Union members will also yeah. give a shout out to them because he says when they go on strike, we'll back them up. But yeah, yeah, well, kudos to him. That opening monologue, my my issue with it is it went too long. It was like thirty five yeah. minutes till we got to the first award. Wow, I didn't even realize uh, that. Yeah, wow. yeah, it, yeah. They can tighten that up a little. Bit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <just> a little, <laughs> yeah. I felt like it was just a big Barbenheimer opening too. They didn't really focus on many other the movies. They did focus on Killers of the Flower Moon, but they were really picking on that movie a lot, and the jokes were just fell flat. It's like, oh, we yeah. know it's a long movie. Going to the Oklahoma just was not a funny joke by Kimmel. One, th one thing that was interesting when Kimmel kind of threw this in the face of the people that were there, he was talking about Greta Gerwig's snub for director, and people sort of applauded, and he said, you're the voters. Yeah, you right. did yeah, this. You're the reason why she didn't <laughs> I was get like, a, a oh, nomination. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, he he like called them out. That was clever. I, yeah. I thought that was funny. I, I like enjoyed that, that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Kimmel. <laughs> Good on you. So, yeah, yeah, don't applaud if you didn't vote for it. <laughs> uh, so then after the monologue, they, they get into the awards. And one thing that a lot of people agreed on that was very tasteful and well done is, is how they brought out the past winners yep. to address each nominee. And Im imagine you're a first time nominee, you know, and this is a big deal. And now one of your heroes, one of Hollywood royalty is looking you in the eye and saying, this is what your performance meant. And I thought that was a very classy and elegant Sort of move. a yeah, passing of the torch yeah. sort of thing. That It was it was nice. I liked it, but I, there was a part of me that says, I wish they, they maybe told the others in advance they rehearsed a little bit you, so you know who your buddy is. Yeah, so yeah. They can talk to you. Because for, for some of them, like when it came to Forrest Whitaker with uh, uh, Coleman Domingo, it yeah, just, yeah. It looked like he was reading it, and then after holding it, then he'd look at him. And for <laughs> someone like Sam Rockwell with RDJ, he was like, "Dude, I love you, and I'm just going to keep yeah. riffing yeah, and matching." Some of them honors. did have a connection, yeah. but some of them you could tell, "Oh, this is going to be your guy over here." But and for the ones that didn't have it, it it felt static, and then you felt the time like, "Oh, oh we're well." That was the thing. Initially, it's like, "Oh my God, it's going to be a four hour telecast." Yeah. But <laughs> luckily, I mean, they they kind of came in on time, so right. it didn't detract from the ceremony too much. So I, I think I missed you guys during i said what i think what rob was saying too i was like we're only i gave a half hour lead so i could flash forward through commercials and i'm like oh my god <laughs> yeah. two awards in this is what is going on yeah and luckily they just did that for some of the key uh nominations it's it, you know you don't want to bring no disrespect to like the short documentaries but you don't want to bring back five right. documentaries. you don't have to do that on, yeah. on every one I, yeah. I honestly thought that that was what was going i was like, oh my god <laughs> right we're gonna be here till tomorrow <laughs> i was surprised <laughs> they didn't do it for director though because spielberg yeah came right out solo yeah. i thought that'd been interesting if they would have brought all like, bring up the del, del toro yeah. or alfonso Cuarón. Yeah. or but do yep. you think it's because the directors caved early <laughs> like uh, uh, <laughs> or are they are they too egotistical yeah <laughs> i tell you one thing if i had my brothers spielberg could present every year like imagine having your great. oscar yeah. handed to you from spielberg he's and he's he plays favorite. along so well they had a oh, joke the jokes with, and stuff yeah that he took he's part like, in he looks at me kate mckinnon's like uh, it to me. yeah who who is i sending my tasteful nudes to <laughs> yeah and then I guess, I think after the show, one of the parties, I don't know if it was the governor's ball or one of them, uh, they served in and out. And there was a photo circulating of Spielberg taking a picture of his in and out burger. Yeah, I saw it. And I'm like, phone. I love right. this guy, man. Yep. He's awesome. And then uh, Paul Giamatti wore, uh, Giamatti wore his uh, in and out cufflinks. And I guess <laughs> after he had won an award earlier in the awards season, the Globes, he, yeah. he went to uh, in and out for uh, he brought his award with him. So right. that was like a homage That's to fun. Sideways because at the end of that movie, yeah. he's, it was supposed yes. to be in and out, but they couldn't get the rights back then. I'm sure they regret <laughs> oh. it though. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Because yeah, yeah. Nice. I didn't realize that. Uh, so yeah, so we're off to a pretty good start here, and then they hand out the first award. Uh, Divine Joy Randolph, man, 
great speech, yep. yes. emotional, um, well-deserved. Uh, no surprise there. I think we all sort of picked her yep. uh, for, for Best Supporting Actress. Um, but uh, that was a great way to get the awards going was seeing her speech. And I love Kimmel's comment. See, kids, smoking does pay off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Now, here's a tidbit I learned today, and this kind of shocked me. Um, and I might have to look this up, but as far as Best Supporting Actress goes, I think like 10 African American women have been either nominated or won. I don't know if you guys have that number. Um, but then it know. said uh, in the category of Best Actress, we're still only at one. Halle Berry, right, and I'm ball. like, wait, what? Oh, so okay. even though the Oscars have made some strides, uh, there's still some things that. Let me tell you, this is a small side bit. I have here for anyone that can see Robert's master list that we picked, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you one thing: we we were one pick away, and we still might do this. I'm taking <laughs> Rob to Vegas. Because this man, I was going through. I'm like, yep, this is amazing. <laughs> that was in January, and so much you know happened after that but uh you know i know you know joseph and i were pretty much saying it was going to come down to giamatti and and murphy and yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, you know yeah, you, you called sure murphy did. so that was a good call yeah 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 here's the uh here's the the trivia bit that i was looking for so divine joy randolph became the 10th black actress to win to win best supporting actress meanwhile halle berry's win for monsters ball remains the sole victory for a black actress so and that, that was surprised me. early 2000s right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like 2003 or uh, 4 uh, 2001 One. Oh, yeah okay at the 2002 oscars for the 2001 yeah. movie yeah, i never saw that movie great, but i know it was a great while. great film great performance a while ago i recommend wow. it yeah so uh well deserved win for divine joy randolph also lover in um uh only murders in the building uh if you watch that she has yeah. a recurring role on that uh, not too long after that, this is another, for me, a best moment. Uh, they were celebrating or, or observing the, the 50th anniversary of the Oscar streaker. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, while David Niven was pre presenting a streaker ran behind him and he had one of the all time great ad libs when he said it's brave of him to show off his shortcomings, <laughs> uh, which got a huge <laughs> laugh. And so Kimmel, you know, he, he delivers that cue, which supposedly was to cue, uh, John Cena, but then he chickens out. And then, uh, I love, <laughs> I love the line when he said, you know, uh, John Cena says the, the male body is nothing to be made fun of. And, it's and, not a joke. He, he's like, my yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> And so he's like, well, you still got to present the award. And so when he came out with that oversized envelope, I'm like, what uh, am I seeing here? He's so like, funny. I can't present it. I can't <laughs> let go of the envelope. And Kimmel's like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> yeah. And Kimmel said in his uh, monologue on his show the following night that there was all kinds of discussion about whether to move forward with this and uh, how do we how do we make sure that the envelope doesn't fall and blah, 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 blah. Um, per now, personally, I thought, it was hilarious. I thought John Cena was a great sport, um, but there was a faction of people out there who criticized it and condemned it. I call them um, the fuddy duddies. <laughs> what are your thoughts <laughs> on the John Cena moment? I thought it was funny. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I didn't see it coming. When I, I, I knew the reference of the David Niven thing from the 70s because my dad had recently told me about it like a month ago. And oh, I, wow. And I had never heard about it, so I had to look it up on YouTube. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I just recently found out about this. And I'm like, I'm curious to see where they're going with this. And I, didn't I, was, I didn't think he'd actually step out. I thought he would stay behind. Then he started stepping yeah. on. I went, oh, God, don't <laughs> drop that. I, I was like, that envelope right. can't fall. Yeah, don't yeah. slip on. Don't have your sand. Don't have a you trip on your sandals. And, and then he, when he gets out to the microphone and he goes, costumes. Yes. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is paying <laughs> off. Yep. Yeah, that was uh, hilarious. It was film. very, very funny, I thought. And, you, so. and he was really naked out there. There was like no uh, little skimpy well, underwear someone, or jeans screen or anything. Someone told me, what's the he had a word? Sock. I think he had a... Uh, there was a word for that. I don't know <laughs> if sock. they wear in the theaters or something. He had something covering uh, that some area, of him. Maybe. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But I would imagine the people backstage got an eye. I, I think so, right. I, I think it's like the movie theaters. I, not movie theater, I think it's like the a movie production when they cover the, the schlong. Like, that's it. Like the schlong and like part of the crack, and that's it. What's the uh, – oh, there's a, there's a word. Uh, 
it starts with an M. I'm trying to remember what it is. I may have to look it up later. But where, if a, a woman wants to do a nude scene, oh, but she, uh, yeah, Mer- Merkin. Merkin. Is it a Merkin? Yeah. 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 So yeah. maybe Do you remember the, had... what the president's name was in um, <laughs> Dr. Strangelove? Dr. Merkin Mer- Muffley. <laughs> oh, that's right. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Anyway. So I'm sure he had something like that. Now. But I, I thought it was a funny moment. Yeah. And, uh, the controversy Dunlop. I don't understand because, you know, we watch movies with bikinis and yeah. Yeah. skimpy underwear. So if you're going to complain about that, you might as well complain about the other stuff. It's just outrage. Oh, yeah. Outrage, I like to call it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I agree. Yeah. It, it's kind of hypocritical. But um, all right. So next up uh, on the timeline, and this is one of my favorite moments when. Uh, Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling came out yes. to present together uh, to honor the stunt world, which was a little bit of a public publicity <laughs> pl- ploy because um, they just um, Fall Guy. premiered yeah. the Fall Guy at uh, South by Southwest. So that was a deliberate thing to bring them on stage together. But I thought their chemistry was outstanding. Mm-hmm. And when they started just jabbing each other about the award season and when Emily Blunt was like, not, not, not that much of a rivalry. Yeah. And, that, and see, that kind of banter I enjoyed. But the one where I, when I commented to all you guys, it was the... Uh, was it with Melissa McCarthy? M- Melissa McCarthy's and, banter. And, yeah, that, that yeah, did not that work at... Yeah, that was very yeah. stilted. Yeah. It just didn't work. It's weird because she's a comedian. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I think the premise was that writers make a difference. And so they... they, tr- they acted as if they were ad-libbing, which failed miserably. Then they... When they started following the teleprompter, then they said, "Oh yeah, this is better," and the joke just fell flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that it, didn't work. It seems like she's fallen flat lately because she recently presented another one and didn't. Yeah, hit either. yeah, Robert's got. Yeah, hmm. yeah, she's she's a little bit of a in a losing streak. <laughs> it's, it's, sometimes it's the people when you just leave, like Arnold and and Danny DeVito. Oh yeah, I, oh that I, was I, hilarious. I was yeah. dying. That was great. Yeah, like, but yes. Emily Blunt and 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 uh, Ryan Gosling. Yeah, there were some yeah. presenters on that. They just have. It's natural. Just let her yeah. run. Let her right. ride. And when she brought up his painted on abs and he grabbed the <laughs> mic and said, she's kidding. Yeah. She's kidding. <laughs> I was laughing out loud. Like, we I'm have like, to move this, beyond this. Emily, we have to move beyond this. <laughs> and then, of course, they acknowledge the stunt world, which I'm like, oh, is there a stunt Oscar this year? And then I realized it was just oh. a tribute. And I'm like, right. all right, it's time to acknowledge it's, the they, stunt world. We need world. a stunt category. Yeah. You have to. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully that that uh, that little segment will like raise yeah. awareness. Like, would it be like a stunt yeah. coordinator, stunt? T- so basically, like an organizer of a stunt team, a, and, a, a and like stunt a fight coordinator team. type thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the choreographer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe that's what they need to work out. What exactly are they going to honor? Because they did announce that in a year or so they're going to acknowledge casting, best right. casting. Good. Uh, so yeah, I think it's time to recognize. Oh the my stunt God! How many and, Oscars did? Did Jackie Chan lose that on now? If they do this, yeah, right. Right. Jackie Chan's be like, are you <laughs> he kidding me? He should get them retroactively right. and just have a big box of them to hand to them. <laughs> so, um, all right, following that, uh, best actor uh, win, Robert Downey Jr. Such a great moment. Again, not a shocker by any means that he was the front runner. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, he his win was just well-deserved. And uh, he had a, a charming uh, acceptance speech where he thanked his uh, awful childhood, which I thought was funny. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, man, d- you know, he's he was due. He was due. But when the night I saw Oppenheimer opening night, I said, "Best supporting." Yeah. yeah. Because he played he played against type. Yeah. Everyone knows him as, as Iron Man, as Iron Man, and, yeah, and yeah. then a lot of comedic. I mean, a lot of dramatic stuff. And then of course he had. A, a big gap where you know he had trouble and yeah. wasn't doing anything, but that that role was that category had some Sterling K. Brown was awesome. I mean, yeah. there's yeah. not a bad performer in there. Yeah. You right. know what's was interesting a... is a lot of times when I'm watching a movie and I'm seeing what I think is an Oscar worthy performance, there's always one moment where I go, "There it is." And for Oppenheimer, it's when he's at the end of the movie yep. when he starts getting accused and he's trying to defend his terrible behavior and yeah. i remember sitting there watching it going there it is there's the oscar yeah. winning moment right. so when he brings up eisenhower yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah and i remember thinking the same thing with la la land when uh when ryan gosling says to emma stone in la la land uh you're an actress or something and you see like the hurt 
and the pain on, on Emma Stone's character's face. And I remember thinking, there it is, there it is. And she won Best Actor that year. And I remember after seeing La La Land, I posted on Facebook, uh, congratulations to Emma Stone on her Oscar win, which was still six months away, yeah, sure, <laughs> and sure. she won. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, there's mo- and then the same thing happened with uh, the holdovers when, when um, uh, Divine Joy Randolph is in the kitchen at the party, and she's had yeah. a little too much to drink. Oh, it's a great scene, And she yeah. goes <laughs> off down. the rails yeah. about her son. I, and I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. And, yep. and, again, I remember sitting there going, there it is. Yep. Yes. There's the Oscar-winning yeah, monologue. That's, right. a, that's a powerful that's, moment. That's a great point. You, and when you think back up to all the previous winners and what they won for, there's that one there's moment. That moment. <laughs> the Oscar yeah. moment. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a great performance role, but you're like, no, you're there right. it is. That That's what... what yeah. What, what was the deal with, speaking of Downey Jr. winning, what was the deal with Tim Robbins messing that up? Is, is there a tension between the two? Because No, I think that was a genuine faux pas. And uh, the article that I saw earlier today, maybe that's who he voted for. It was to do De Niro. And, and yeah. Okay. And then when he said that Oscar winning performance, and then he corrected himself and said Oscar worthy performance, and the <laughs> audience kind of laughed it off. They're like, well, he might have just, you know, tipped his hand and, and showed who he voted for. But mm-hmm. I think it was a genuine slip up. And, well, and, and he I'm did sure not a De Niro after that, too. But I just didn't know if that was deliberate or an accident to the Donnie yeah, Jr. Okay. Was like, you, so it wasn't just me. I was going, yeah, I was wondering about that. Did he just have a Warren Beatty moment? Right. <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. So what happened af- so, after that? Well, basically, he just pretty much snubbed Donnie Jr.'s moment there. And he's like, and the Oscar winner. And he goes, oh, the no- nominee to De Niro. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he goes. Oh, I think you're the winner anyway, De Niro, something like that, he said, yeah. right? Oh, I didn't catch that. It, it yeah. almost, the way, I, I, I agree with Robert. When I watched it, I almost felt like, oh, he already knows who the winner is. <laughs> and now the whole Oscars are rigged is going to be trending yeah, on right. Twitter. Because it, yeah. instead of waiting for the moment, he just announced, he just said it right there. Yeah, imagine yeah. had he won. That would have been a scandal. Oh, yeah. Right. What did he know? I think yeah, it's what yeah. you said, that you, you voted for De Niro. And I wanted to bring yeah. that up, too. I watched Oppenheimer the second time. I watched Killers of the Flower Moon. My gosh, it's 14, 15 hours of my life with the two movies, <laughs> yeah. watch them twice. But I'll have to say, though, I love Downey Jr., but I like De Niro a little more, and I'll tell you why. Hmm. De Niro, for me, had a little bit more, just a little bit more layers than Downey Jr. did in that film. Downey Jr. Yeah. is pretty much very menacing and sinister in that film, yeah. as is De Niro. But there's a little bit of more humanism and a little bit more nuance hmm. than De Niro, especially in that third act uh, with DiCaprio finding out about his a young son, and there, there was that really bonding moment there. And I was hmm. like, "Why wow, I can't stand this guy. There's a little bit of life <laughs> to De Niro in this role. And it just goes to show the power of De Niro in that role. There writing. was a moment in, in in Flower Moon where De Niro acknowledges that, yeah, what we're doing is wrong. Like, right. Hmm. And, and so when you can, I know how we, we're not trying to humanize the villain, but when you can put those layers in there, we're like, hey, this is what I am. Right. I know. And they are human in the end of the day. Yeah. There's, our, there's nuance and redemption to be found well any yeah. interesting yeah. villain has uh, a, a motivation to do what they do and right. and, and sometimes so just, you, you're a... sympathetic <laughs> like that. yeah yeah like uh, you know i bring up an example of uh javier uh de bardim who was in uh the skyfall and he was a sympathetic oh, yeah. villain like you Great, felt for him that he had been abandoned and when he's in that Emma, glass case yeah. i'm like yeah, I, I, I was like, like Judy. Judy, this is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? I like truth, the, the sympathetic villain. I like mm-hmm. that. Now, what I liked about uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s performance in Oppenheimer is his arc. Like, you know, he, he's the movie starts off with him as like a supporting character, you know, supporting Oppenheimer, and 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 all of a sudden you see this spiral where right. all of a sudden he takes this dark turn and you're like, Oh geez, he's the villain in this story. And, yep. and so it was cool that he, he didn't reveal that until the end that, yeah. uh, he, he was the villain. So abusing his power in that role too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, Nick, you touched on this a little bit, but, uh, the, the Arnold and, uh, Danny DeVito moment, <laughs> you know, they, they come out and they go, you know, uh, they, they asked us to present together for obvious reasons, of course, twins. Right. But then when they, did a 180 and said, we both tried to kill Batman. And when, when Arnold said, Batman, you son of a bitch, That's- I lost it. I thought, and then they see him sitting in the crowd and I'm sure this had to have been planned, but it felt very like, yeah. uh, Keaton's another one that can just roll with it. And when they cut to his reaction he's and like, he's just yeah, staring, right. dagger, I wanted him to go, you want to get nuts? Yeah. Let's get nuts. That's what it, I, I heard him say. I heard him say it. He didn't say it. 
And and, I, and then when Devito's like, I want to see you after the governor's ball, and that's when he did the gesture. <laughs> yeah. it, it was, that was it, awesome. It, it was great. It, it was Arnold's second son of a bitch that broke me. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, how did he beat you with heat? No, with yeah. the power of love. He threw me out a window. <laughs> <laughs> that Batman, that son of a bitch. He's like, he's right there. Bitch. There he is. And you just hear when they're cut to Keaton. How yeah. dare you he, show your face here, you man? Son of a bitch. That was, that was real great. clever. I laughed part of that yeah yeah that was a great moment so kudos to whoever put all that together and placed keaton where the camera can get a yeah. shot of him and was, everything was that for the visual yeah. effects award uh that was for godzilla yeah yes. so let's yeah. talk about yeah. that yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm glad you brought that up so yeah to hear schwarzenegger go and well, what goes to godzilla yeah that was great <laughs> And the, the fact that Godzilla won an Oscar and the team that came up to accept it had the little golden Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. They, they all hold my Godzilla. They all had the Godzillas. Oh, that was really cool. what I love, the director shoot. had a wonderful speech. The only problem is I wish they'd just given him a translator. Yeah. yeah. He, he right. should have. So he could have said it in, in, yeah. in, in, in Japanese. And it would, because right. I read the transcript and it was a great speech. It's like what I was, it was like, I, I felt like Rocky Balboa. You know, uh, and yeah. how I was motivated. Uh, yeah. I was like, man, this is, and I, I was like, oh, that's what he was saying. Yeah. 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 He really struggled with it and it was unfortunate, but it was a great moment to see that movie uh, win. And I hope that inspires a lot of people to check it out when it comes out on DVD. I guess it's going to be released in Japan on May 1st, hopefully here in the U.S. soon yeah, after. And I hope a lot I of still people check seen it, it out. I, and I a, to watch, and yeah. a kudos to Robert for talking me off the outrage ledge because I was like, <laughs> I can't believe it. Why did it? He's like, Nick, Nick it was Jet. Je Japan didn't do it. It's like, my God, you're right. It's not the Oscars. It's Japan. It's not the Academy. Right. Yeah, yeah Japan, they chose the Japan film. Japan betrayed him. Japan Just betrayed like in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so like, that, that was great. I was like, yeah, Robert's right. He talked me down. I'm absolutely convinced that had they submitted Godzilla uh, as a foreign language film, it would have won. I'm, I'm convinced. I, of I it. think they need to get rid of that rule. Yeah, I it, agree. It, it, yeah. It's just... As you were mentioning, that uh, there's yeah. another film yeah. that France didn't get to submit. Well, right, because Anatomy of Fallen's yeah. best or gets nominated for Best International, does not get nominated for International, simply because it, France, France didn't submit it. They, they submitted uh, The Taste of Things, which is a wonderful movie as well. But yeah. it should go by release date. You know, if two great Japanese films are great yeah. that year, they should be nominated too. Right? I agree. Yeah. At least submitted for consideration. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, and, and the funny thing is, I'm on threads now. I left Twitter a year ago. And someone had asked on threads, uh, what was your favorite movie of 2023? And I commented and I said, uh, well, it came out in 2023. I didn't see it till 2024, but I said, Godzilla. And someone responded with basically an eye roll in text. And I said, did you see Godzilla? And they said, no, I didn't. He goes, after the last few Godzilla movies, I had no interest. I said, you are dead wrong on this. I said, you got to see this new movie. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't. Uh, you can't judge like that if you haven't yeah. actually seen it. Yeah. I right. said, I said, this is Dunkirk with Godzilla. And so I'm hoping that I convince this guy to check it out. And if you're listening and you haven't seen Godzilla and you're like, how did it win an Oscar? Trust me when it comes out on DVD or when it starts streaming, please check it out. And I, perf I saw the black and white version, which I recommend check out black and white. If that I yeah, that was wonderful too. Yeah. So people were doubting Godzilla minus one winning. Did you hear about this simply because it wasn't on the Oscar uh, portal simply because when the Hollywood releases the Godzilla movie, just coming out soon, there's a deal where they have to pull their movie back on every platform available. Oh. So oh. The, the, a lot of the Oscar voters they were worried weren't able to see the film, but I don't hmm. know. I was like, you can't snub Godzilla here. There'd be too yeah, much outrage. And, Robert, what are you yeah. doing to me? Are you trying to... I, I don't want to be, go to the conspiracy theory with the Academy. Now, then you bring this up. <laughs> He's got a direct line to the Academy. Stop playing with my emotions, man. <laughs> well, let's, just, let's be happy it triumphed and won. It did. Yeah, yeah and I... Yeah. I guess it's going to get a, a re-release in Japan, which hopefully will pad its box office. But also, yes. Robert made a point. It, it hasn't come out in most international. Like it hasn't opened in India and China, where you have like two new, billion people. This is the Hollywood uh, upcoming Godzilla Kong movie coming up. Yeah. Oh, oh that, that's yeah, right. that's, yes. yeah. They can't which overlap. Works. The studios can't overlap with Japan in the release date. Uh, like a I don't 60, like that. Seventy-day window. Yeah, I don't um, like that. I saw yeah. the trailer for that new King Kong, yeah. movie, and it looks. Awful. It won't yeah. be as good. With the little won't, baby. Yeah. yeah. Won't be as yeah. good as this one. This yeah. minus one, I can tell you that. Right, right. Yeah. Someone I read today that someone said Godzilla sports a Thanos like glove. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. What? No, no. Kong does. Kong, Kong yeah, does? Kong but does. he okay. but he has the yeah. glow of Thanos. Okay. The purple glow oh, okay. of Thanos. This that that took a weird like in twenty fourteen they said like, Oh, what if monsters were real? And it had that how would you react kind of thing. How would yeah. we react? I, then also that, that, that one was good. The then we also went like 
space technology and it's yeah so all right now of course when you watch the oscars you expect some politics and i want to say this about politics at the oscar when when you're given the spotlight and you have hundreds of millions of people possibly watching across the planet if you're going to take you know your chance to deliver your message what better platform is there i I hate when someone says oh why are they doing this at the oscar because no one's listening in your living room you you know you're 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 on stage and there's a lot of eyes on you so if you want to deliver your message go ahead one of my favorite moments at the oscars was um the acceptance speech for 20 days in maripole if i'm pronouncing that correct yep and when he said i don't think any director has ever stood up here and said i will give this Oscar back if I didn't have to produce this film yeah. and this war never happened. And I'm like, that's some powerful yeah. stuff. Yeah, he's like, right. I, I wish I didn't have to make this movie. Yeah, and there was stunned silence. Yeah. Like, everyone was like, what did he just... And, and that was, I thought that was a pretty great moment. Yep. That was that pretty was, cool. Yeah, that was... Yeah, yeah. so that, that, was, that was a neat moment. Uh, which now brings us to what might be one of the top 10 Oscar moments of all time. The I'm just Ken, uh, or what's it? What's his song? I'm, I'm just Ken. I'm yeah. just Ken. Yeah. yeah. And so the the camera's up in the lights. They turn pink, and the camera tilts down to uh, to him sitting in the audience behind Margot Robbie, and she is laughing uncontrollably. And you see Billie Eilish behind uh, behind him laughing uncontrollably. And when he begins that number, you're like, oh, here we go. Buckle right. up, buttercup. <laughs> and it was enormously entertaining, funny. And then you see the Kens from the movie as background yeah, dancers. Yeah. Yep. And, and I didn't, even, you know, I'm a big Marilyn Monroe guy, and I didn't even make the connection initially that it was an homage to Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend mm-hmm. from uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. The, the dancers had the same wardrobe on and everything, and here's, here's, uh, him with the the pink outfit on and everything. He got and... Slash to show up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was. I was yeah, like, "What's great. Slash doing yeah. at the Oscars? This that is great." Was awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so Ryan just just went into it a hundred and ten percent, and and he really showed off his you know Disney kid dancing and singing sure skills. Did. Yeah, and I thought, and this is a crazy thing to say, I thought he sang this number better at the Oscars than any of the singing he did in La La Land. Like, I remember when he was in La La Land, I'm like, okay, he's a fine actor. I don't think he's all that great a singer in this movie. But then he showed some real chops during this performance. And I saw people online, you know, as the broadcast is happening, they're like, he sang that live. It was not lip synced. Yeah. Right. He didn't lose his breath. He stayed on key and he did all the choreography. Yeah. And people who are in musical theater were like, I am really impressed with what he accomplished. The man was yeah. a mouseketeer. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's been doing it for a while. He used to be next to uh, Timberlake. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah in, in Brittany. Yeah, and, the Mickey uh, Mouse Club. Yeah. 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 But I've seen people since on social media say that they've watched that number 15, 20 times now. It's taken on a life of its own. Now, let me ask you guys this. You know, they're all, everyone's talking about John Mulaney, and, you know, did a wonderful thing. <laughs> How about Ryan Gosling hosting the Oscars? Hey. I don't know. If he's not nominated. Is it too much of a good thing? I don't know. I don't know. Because the role of the host, like Jimmy Kimmel, is to kind of kick things off, step back, let it do its thing, and then maybe pop on occasionally. And I don't know if if Ryan would be suited for that role. I kind of like what he did this year. It reminds me of James Franco that year when he Oh, God. Oh, that was not, what it yeah, that, that, that would be, right. yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. 2010, right? Oh. <laughs> Interesting to think about. Now, you yeah, mentioned Mulaney. Mulaney, I think, would be a great host. When he came out and presented yes. what he presented for, I forget <laughs> what it was, he was very, very funny, and he clearly has a love and a passion for films. Yep. He, yeah. re- he <laughs> recounted the entire plot of The Field of Dream, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this guy, he... I think you need to throw his name in the hat for a future hosting gig, I think. Mm-hmm. And he's, he, he, based on his past experience on Saturday Night Live, he took part in that the, the big famous musical number on SNL about the lobster being ordered in a diner. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was brilliant. It was like a parody of Les Miserables. And uh, he has the, the, the chops to pull off a hosting gig. So I, that's who got my vote. M- Mulaney, he's probably in my top three of stand-ups today. Yeah. I, I was lucky enough to see him live back in 2016 before he got super huge. <laughs> yeah. Um 
I think people who have a background in stand up do do the best at, at hosting yeah. big gigs like that. Yeah, you're Steve Kimmel, Martins and Billy Crystal's yeah, right. and uh even I'm so, going back to Johnny Carson. That, yeah. That's that would be the only thing that I would have I would say I would give it to Mulaney over Gosling. Oh yeah. As as I think it it just historically runs better with giving it to those type of guys rather than the handsome leading men. Yeah. You know, not not that there's anything against that, but I just think that they they have more of that uh, direct audience, you know, yeah. give and take, rather than a leading man who, eighty percent of the time is is acting in front of a camera. Yeah, and it's, a, it's a different, it's a different, um, just a different style. I agree. But, and a comedian could read the room and maybe yep. know if something's working or not, that sort of thing. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Academy, think about that. Yes. Well, yes. I, I also feel that uh, you know who wants this role bad, Bill Maher. He, he oh. does Friday night shows. He's, <laughs> that would be he, yeah, he's always begging for it. Yeah. It would be very controversial. And like, look, I don't agree with him on everything, but I, I do think he'd do a hilarious job nonetheless. I'm afraid. Again, I, I bring up Ricky Gervais. I'm afraid he would be too cynical and and mock Hollywood. He, he would more than it deserves. Right. You know, this is this is. I watch the Oscars because I love movies and I'm passionate about film and I don't care if these Oscars are, or the actors are patting each other on the back and I don't want to see someone to come up and go, you bunch of phonies, look at you. Yeah. I don't want to see that. That's not why I'm tuning yeah. in. If he, could t- I, if he could tame it down, yeah. he'd probably, yes, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I don't think Gervais is... No, he's way... I don't yeah. think he's funny he's at all. Yeah. I, think, I don't know why they keep asking. He's probably saying, why do you keep asking me? Yeah, yeah. When you <laughs> asked me the second time, yeah, I didn't he understand He did the Golden that. Globes a number of times, yeah. and I, I can't watch no. it. I'm like, it's like he's watching very, a train wreck. Something ride. very off-putting about that dude. What I don't, I don't know, know is, <laughs> why have they never brought back Tina Fey and Amy Poehler? Oh. Yeah, yeah. they've done the Golden Globes a few times, and they, they're They were great. amusing in it, yeah. Yeah, yep. and they could they can make biting commentary. They, they do some, you know, good stuff, but... It, it doesn't come across as mean spirited. So, right. yeah. Um, the next best moment I have is uh, when uh, Billie Eilish and uh, her brother, um, what's his name? Uh, he's escaping me, and I apologize. Phineas. Phineas. Something. I don't yeah. Know his last so name. you know, I love the song. I think the song is beautiful. I remember when it started playing in the theater. I'm like, oh my god, who is this? And then it said Billie Eilish. I was like, really? And so her performance was great on the show, and then they win the award and. I, I laughed out loud when she was thanking her former teachers, and she brought one up by name and said, even though you didn't like me, uh, you did your job well. And I'm like, God, imagine sitting on your sofa and Billie Eilish calls you out and says, you didn't like me. But And I think her point of that was, look where I am now. I think, <laughs> I think she did it like – she wanted to look as if she was acknowledging her teacher, but I think she was sticking it to her teacher. If you could find that oh, teacher, sure. that, yeah. that teacher's probably going, and look who finally had learned to hit the notes. <laughs> <laughs> Hate me all you want. You're welcome. Yeah. But, yeah, what a what a talent. And uh, so <clears throat> one of the little tidbits that I uh, learned is that uh, Billie Eilish and, and Phineas uh, have now won two Oscars. Uh, first one for the uh, song from uh, – uh, no Time to Die, the Bond song. Oh, that's right, that's right. And so at 22 years old, Billie Eilish is the youngest person ever to have two Oscars. Yeah, which, which was is, two years ago, and then yeah. now Barbie. Yeah, wow. very, very impressive. And There was a funny a meme going around, Scorsese won Oscar. Yeah. yeah. Billie, <laughs> Billie <Eilish> two. <laughs> yeah, imagine how John Williams is going to feel at some point. <laughs> John Williams is going to go, wait a minute. Can you imagine uh, if they're at the same party and Billy's like, nah, 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 like teasing Scorsese? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty amazing. But she's very talented, and so is so is Phineas, and uh, well deserved. Uh, let's talk about one of the worst moments. Uh, not to dwell too much on negativity, but we got to bring up the in memoriam segment. Man, oh. they screw it up year after year after year. You know, they used to play music, go full screen with the image and a name. Yeah. Uh, early on, you would hear the audience react, which I didn't like because it became like this popularity contest where some people got more applause than others. Yeah, yeah. So they killed the mics and just played the music and played the graphic. And I thought, okay, I think they got it. But then, of course, there's always the, the, the post-broadcast discussion of who was left out, and there's always big names that were left out. Now, over the last few years, they started this trend – where 
they don't even go full screen with the graphics. It's on a screen on the stage yeah. that we at home are squinting yep. to see who's on the screen. And then that last page that had 40 names on it that we're supposed right. to look at. And there were some really big names that were squeezed onto that yeah. list, like Treat Williams and Treat Williams, Kenneth Anger. Yeah, and and Suzanne Summers, who granted, you know, was more of a TV star than a, a movie star, but she was in several movies. And right. imagine playing that clip where she's in the Thunderbird and American Graffiti, and she turns to Richard Dreyfuss and says, "I love you." And he's like, "Who's that blonde?" But you could have thrown that moment in; it would have been yeah. really cool. How do they screw this up year after year after year? Yeah, I, I I'm curious to see the 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 process of. Of, of putting that together like yeah is it three people just like all right uh let's get these names here uh these are the ones we can leave off at the end yeah and squeeze right. together i and and how they edited or they had so many different screens and they'd put five people up at once and i don't know I, that 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 was that was one of the weakest yeah. point, points when they of the played show. time to say goodbye i thought okay this is just gonna be the background music then pop he comes out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! And the camera's going to linger on him and his Bocelli, son. But is that what it was? Andrea, but yeah, yeah Bocelli. Andrea Bocelli. And yeah. I was like, oh. yeah. And it's a beautiful song, and I yeah. thought it was a great choice. But at some point, I, w- I was expecting him to go full screen, and they never did. And uh, I, I don't, I don't understand Although, the was conversation. This, was this one of those years where a lot more people? Got well, there were a passed, lot, and yeah. you notice almost uh, early on they included uh, uh, Richard, uh, uh, the Lewis. comedian Lewis, who just died like two weeks prior. Right. They got him in there and got his picture in there. Yeah. But then they relegated some people to text at the end, and um, I, I hate to say this because I know when when they started including a lot of like production people, and and I and I know this isn't true, but I I joke, you know, key grips and best boys like. Is that really necessary? Can can we can we put them on a website or, where you right. can say go entertainment visit? lawyer? Yeah, I was yeah. just yeah, gonna yeah, yeah. say entertainment yeah, lawyer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do they like publicists? Do you really take out? You know, yeah. um, oh, what was I'm trying to think of the one actor who was relegated toward the end, who a lot of people loved. I can't remember his name, of course. But uh, you relegate them to the end, but you're you're recognizing an entertainment lawyer. I I I personally think that was a mistake. You know, <laughs> do do all the big names up front, give the people what they want, and then say, you know, they always say, oh, to see the complete list, visit Oscars.com or whatever. Do that. I, I, I'm in agreement. Some of those I, I want to know, you know, when, you know, God forbid, when Carl Welch, when the time comes, you're like, when I, when I want to see the actors, actors, directors, famous screenwriters, the ones who... The big ones. Yeah, yeah. like the really big ones. Like, you know, I don't need to know, who, you know, when the Transformers writer kicks. Like, right. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I remember the one year, um, you know, you're sitting there watching it going, who are they going to leave off? Who are they going to leave off? And the one year, uh, they acknowledged Michael Jackson, which I thought was odd, um, because the only movie that I know of that he ever had anything to do with was Captain EO. Um, but they left off Farrah Fawcett. And and what's oh. odd about that is they That's both died on the same day, and her death was overshadowed yeah. by Michael Jackson's death. Because I remember... My sister reached out to me and said, did you hear who died? And I said, yeah, Farrah Fawcett. She said, no, Michael Jackson. And I'm like, Michael Jackson? So his death overshadowed Farrah Fawcett. Then during the In Memoriam, she was left off entirely. And she did multiple movies at Michael Jackson. Could you imagine if they ever, when the time comes, if they ever did that to Mel Brooks? Oh, Oh my God. (laughs) Could you, you know. Well, Frederick Forrester was left off, and he's an Oscar nominee. In, in Apocalypse Now, too, and Falling Down. big Really big movies. And, work, work with fans, Francis Ford Cop- Coppola in a few films, too. Yeah, the, and these are the things where I don't mind if you want to, you know, run it at one and a half speed where you can get, you know, some people get that famous line, you know, like, oh, you're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah, yeah. And when the time comes, you, you put it on there. Yeah, yeah. An iconic line, but just move it. Move the... Yeah. Here's the name I was trying to think of. Burt Young. Pauly from Rocky. He was left like, out. Yeah, he, well, he was he was condensed he was at the, the end he was in the, okay. in the, in the, as text. Now, come on, Paulie from Rocky, you're going to say, nah, let's let's put in the the entertainment lawyer. Yeah. Really? Right. He deserves his own clip. Yeah, that role exactly, alone. exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah, and I, I I saw a lot of reactions after the fact saying, you know, but, Academy, get this right, please. But they still don't. I don't know why. This is not the first time where 
I'm sure we're having this conversation in some manner. It's oh, every not, year they butcher it yeah. somehow, and all they need to do is every week they need, the committee needs to get together and find out who sadly died, put it in an archive. There yeah. you go. I could do it for them if they wanted yeah. to. Yeah. Pull up a clip. You know? <laughs> yeah, I could put together that clip reel in an afternoon on my Adobe Premiere. <laughs> I, I don't know why. You should make a mock one and send it to them and retire. That's right. Here you go. <laughs> I saved you some You're money. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go over what, what, some of these. What would be um, weird is when Joe sends the 2025 one, you're like, wait, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Who made this list? That's right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let me look up some of the, or here's some of the uh, little trivia things that I looked up. Uh, let's see. Uh, poor things. What, or, well, okay. So Oppenheimer was the night's biggest yeah. winner, taking home uh, seven total Oscars. Mm -hmm. Uh, poor things, uh, surprising to me really, what, uh, was the second biggest winner of the night taking home Joe, you gotta four see awards. It. It's not my kind of movie. <laughs> I know, I, I know, I know, and I'm it saying beat, that to, to tease it you. beat the spread, which is what I'm pissed off about. <laughs> <laughs> now, I saw a guy, and I was tempted to play some audio from this today, but the language is a little rough. But I saw a guy, I think he was an Irishman, walking with his phone reviewing poor things and it was hysterical he's like and and then and i'm gonna do a terrible irish accent but he's like and this woman would put anything she could find into her and i'm like what and and he went on and on and on and he's like i wish i could unsee what and i'm like yeah i don't think this movie is for me Robert and I, we, we got to see it on the big screen a couple weeks yes, ago. And I, I'm glad. I saw it a second time. I wanted were to see you, it on the... Were you guys able to make eye contact after that? <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but uh, it's my type of movie, so... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the ceremony clocked in at three hours, 26 minutes. I liked the earlier start time because yes. There, was, yes. there was time for me the to watch it. 7 a.m. was uh, brilliant. Please yeah. keep it at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard I Time. And I, I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Screw California, because <laughs> they always they, they always for them like oh they have to get home from work no yeah, right. no it's the Oscars it's Sunday and yeah. we just had yeah, daylight yeah. savings Never. time yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and it gave me time to watch Curb Your Enthusiasm afterward which was <laughs> hysterical uh, let's see let's look at some records uh, Christopher Nolan and his wife Emma Thompson or Thomas I'm sorry uh, along with Charles Roven were part of the producing team that won Best Picture for Oppenheimer. They notably became the first married couple to win this category since Richard Zanuck and uh, Lil Finney Zanuck. Lil Finney? Sounds like a rapper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> won uh, for producing Driving Miss Daisy. Uh, another married couple found success on Oscar Sunday. Just Justine Triette and her husband Arthur Harari uh, won uh, Best uh, Original, Original Screenplay for Anatomy of a Fall. Uh, she was also the first French woman to ever win this, this writing award. Killian Murphy, as I mentioned earlier, was the first Irish born actor to win an Oscar. Um, we mentioned, uh, Billy Eilish and her brother Phineas made history He's the youngest duo with two Oscar wins. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, my friend goes, Billy Eilish and her Harry Potter sounding brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phineas. And I was like, yeah, and like, you know, that's. There are plenty of people named Phineas. He's like, cool. I went, oh, touche. So, yeah, those two the, those two broke several records. They said the, it was the fastest consecutive win uh, for Best Original Song by any songwriter since Tim Rice achieved three wins within five years in the 1990s. Um, so, yeah, so their two wins were like the, the shortest amount of time between two wins. Um, they became the first songwriting duo to win original song twice within the span of three years since Alan Menken and the late Howard Ashman achieved the feat with Under the Sea from Little Mermaid and the title song from Beauty and the Beast. I mean, that, that's some elite company yeah, that yeah. they're in. Absolutely. Uh, here's some sad records. Uh, Diane Warren continued her streak for the most nominations in the Best Music Original Song category without a win. Really? She's the Susan Lucci of Best Music Original Song 15 nominations. She, she, she no did wins. the Flaming Hot movie, correct? Uh, this doesn't say what she was nominated for. I believe for, she was nominated but... for that. The Frito Lay Flaming yeah, Hot yeah, movie. Be, yeah, yeah. Has, that's yeah. one it has to be. Yep. It's called The Fire Inside from F Flaming Hot. Okay. Oh, yeah. She's been nominated a lot since like, the 90s. Yeah. Because yeah, maybe right. Maybe when she gets, an, uh, gets that envelope, yeah. But you know what? <laughs> I, I will say this. Me personally, that's like making it to the final four. Yeah. You win, you win. I, if when you get to the final four, oh, you win an elite stat. Be there. When you're nominated. Be there. Yeah. 
Uh, the Boy and the Heron became the uh, second non-English film to win Best Animated oh, Feature. So happy that one. Um, so yeah. happy that one. I was I surprised. Was yeah. A yeah. lot of people thought Spider-Man was. I, I picked Spider-Man for my uh, uh, pool, and I went 20 for 23 in my pool, but that was the one I lost. No, that, wow. see, that, see yeah. that's okay, because that doesn't get, get us kicked out of Vegas. So you, <laughs> yeah. you, you go perfect, we're banned from Vegas. <laughs> yeah, you right. lose just enough. Right. <laughs> now, some people said that the reason Spider-Man didn't win is because they've already announced the third part of a trilogy. So they said, well, we can give them the award Oh, next it's, it's getting the Lord of the Rings treatment? Yeah. Right. Backlog everything <laughs> right. on Return of the King? That's right. exactly. So Vegas, put your money on Spider-Man uh, in a couple years. Uh, let's see. Emma Stone won her uh, second Best Actress award for Poor Things. What? A, what? A, what? A, we have to talk about that when we get a chance. Sure. Uh, she's the second woman to be nominated for acting in Best Picture from the same film, following Frances McDormand uh, for Nomadland in 2020. Um, Divine Joy Randolph. Oh, we talked about that tenth Black actress to win Best Supporting Actress. Only one Black woman has won Best Actress. Uh, Wes Anderson, who <laughs> won his first Oscar ever, which is shocking, for Best Live Action Short Film, The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar, did not show up to accept his award. And from what I heard, he's not very comfortable making speeches. So well, he was, he was home a, making a diorama made of corduroy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He was actually uh, making a film, I heard. He was yeah. in production. Was it? Okay. Yes. it was a good excuse. <laughs> but, I, I, did, yeah. I love Wes Anderson. And I didn't even know he was putting out a, a short film this year. Yeah, they're on they're on Netflix. Yeah, he did like a series of them. Ah, how have I not seen these? Wow. <laughs> and Benedict Cumberbatch is great in that. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's I gotta watch. Quite it. wonderful. In it. I'm gonna. You guys might know this. Uh, I'm gonna test your film knowledge right now. This is the third nomination for Robert Downey Jr. What were his first two nominations? Cha first, Chaplin. Chaplin's Chaplin, his first one in yep. and '92. Tropic Thunder. Tropic You're Thunder is correct. the second one. Yes, Which, be, that's right. I forgot the about The supporting actor for yeah. 2008. Yep. Think about the a controversy comedy, a that that guy. movie generated, yeah. and then you go, you know, he was nominated for an Oscar. Wow. I, I thought for sure that film was going to be controversial upon release, and it wasn't. I thought it was brilliant. It, I thought yeah. it was yeah. brilliant well, it's a great social performance. commentary. Well, because they, yeah, call, yeah. they call it out in the movie. Right. That's why Brandon J T. Jackson yeah. calls it out. Yeah. Like, the only good role they gave to K Crocodile <laughs> Dundee. <Yeah. laughs> and it generated that classic line, what do you mean, you people? Yeah, it's right. so <laughs> great. So, yeah, so that's those are the films that he's been nominated for. Oppenheimer, Chaplin, and Tropic Thunder. This was one of those weird years where no Tom Hanks, no George Clooney, no Brad Pitt, no Leo in the nominee. I went, huh? Well, I think Leo should have been there for killer. Well, he should have been. He didn't really campaign for it. Here's another uh, unfortunate record. This actor has been nominated four times and now holds the record for the living actor with the most nominations for Best Supporting Actor without winning an Oscar. Giamatti? Uh, no. no, Giamatti's only been I mean twice. Only twice. No, yeah. Um, um, I'll that... even uh, I'll even name the movies. This might make it easier. The kids are all right. Fox Mark Catcher, Ruffalo. Spotlight, and Poor Things. So, yeah. yeah. So Mark Ruffalo, four nominations, yeah. zero wins. He was supporting. hilarious in Poor Things. And I thought, and all of his nominees were supporting. Have been supporting so far. Yeah. 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 Yep. And final uh, final trivia here. Which film went 0 for 10 on Oscar night? Scorsese's Killers of the yeah. Flower Moon. What happened wow. I was there? I, I wasn't expecting it to walk away with nothing. I, I mean, I, I haven't seen the movie, but it's in Scorsese. Yeah. But, but yeah. Do, you, do you think that explains that look on Robert De Niro's face near the end when the camera lingered on him and he had that look of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now I was like, get, okay, someone cut away because Robert doesn't look like he wants to be here tonight. Right, right, right behind this. him is Scorsese, and I, I don't know if is that his wife, his mom, or is it his wife? Who, who's who's Martin Scorsese? Scorsese? Yeah, that's, that was Scorsese's mom. Well, his, well, his She's mom, 130. His, <laughs> mom, it could his be. mom passed away, but she 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 was in Goodfellas and Casino. Right, right, right. she was alive. But this this little trivia note gets worse. This marks director Martin Scorsese's third film to yes. go 0 and 10. Is the Oscar Irishman night. and what was it? The Wolf Gangs of Wall Street. Gangs of New York. Gangs of New York was zero. Whoa. He has gone 0 and 10 three times. Wait a minute. Gangs of New York, did, that had Daniel Day Lewis. He's an yeah. automatic on, on the usual. Right. Uh, but Adrian yeah. Brody won That's Best Actor right. for the Pianist that year. Wow. 
Oh. So, so okay. I don't know who Martin Scorsese pissed off, but Hollywood has yeah, a so, vendetta. Yeah, somebody Look, killed so. in the, in I, the I, early I, 90s. Yes. Yeah. There, there's a lot of people out there from what I see, even certain critics just don't like him because of his backlash against Marvel films. But my gosh, yeah. my, grandpa's, yeah. my grandfather mm. wouldn't like Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> so why, wait, you know, why do we hold it up for him? Yeah, that... How dare you it's not kind Marvel? Of, it's kind of weird when you put it that way, Joe. Yeah. yeah it is, I think it's no sad. I think it's sad, too, that he's only won once. Yeah. And, and, and out of I'm 10 nominees, you, he should have won for they keep, Goodfellas, I feel. Oh, like I agree. Raging Bull. Yeah. They, yeah. Keep, they keep doing this. They're going to let the AI pick it, and they're going to go, listen, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's going to do it. <laughs> so, for the record, Oppenheimer won 7 of 13. Poor Things won 4 of 11. Killers of Flower Moon, zero that. out of ten. Barbie only got one nomination or one win out of eight nominations. That was for best song. I personally think Barbie should have won production design because when you when you look at behind the scenes, most of those effects were practical. Yeah. Which I think was an amazing accomplishment. But maybe yeah. viewers didn't know that and thought it was all CGI. It, it was um, tough. It was tough though, Joe. It really was. Up against poor things. Yeah, yeah they're they're both design. immaculate. It's it's yes. real hard to. Yeah. I mean, poor, poor things, the fantastical settings. Yes. On it. I was it's like, hard to yeah. top. When you have fantastical, it's hard to top. But, yeah. yeah. But, no, was... Barbie's it's great in production design, too, though. Um, here's another uh, snub that you may have noticed. Uh, what film went zero for seven? Maestro. Oh, okay. Which is a Netflix production. Yeah. And Bradley Cooper was. I thought Bradley was, Cooper was Hollywood's darling, but and yeah. he was campaigning harder than yeah. anyone else. Yes. He wrote it, he directed it, he starred in it, it, and yeah. got snubbed. Yeah. Interesting. Is Hollywood turning on Pretty Boy, <laughs> Brad Cooper? I, I and have, the makeup too. Not even makeup. Uh, a lot of people yeah. thought that was going to win, but it went to poor things. But you know yeah. what's interesting about that? I'm glad you brought that up. There was some critici- uh, criticism early on that Bradley Cooper played a Jewish man and needed prosthetics to achieve that look when they probably should have cast a Jewish man. That was the criticism that the movie got right. early on. And I think what we're seeing is the backlash from that. Yeah. I think people well might've yeah. been afraid to vote for it because of that. Um, but, 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 but with that, it's like, okay. Uh, Killian Murphy is a, is a, uh, and, Irish and, playing, uh, yeah. atheist Irish guy playing an, Ameri- <laughs> an American Jew. I know. Um, I mean, are you really going to nitpick about stuff like that? And it's, right. Yeah. But I, I, there might have been well, some we'll, backlash. We'll find out if Jonathan Glazer ever gets a nomination if we're going to win oh, conspiracy theories. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because I was going, I was, I, it's, I didn't, I was like, okay, he, he had his speech. It's fine by me. But yeah, you think he. Like burned on an orphanage or something. Yeah, I know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I can't help talking about Bradley Cooper. I, I, I'm thinking about the clip from uh, uh, Between Two Ferns with Zach Galifianakis <laughs> yeah. when he's interviewing John Hamm, and, and he says, based on Bradley Cooper's success, does that make you optimistic uh, for uh, good-looking idiots? Or <laughs> yeah. something? And that's when John, John Hamm just broke character and started laughing. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's a backlash. Uh, I don't know. Honeymoon is over, but we'll see. I'm sure he'll bounce back. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, the rest of the tally, uh, Anatomy of a Fall, one out of five. American Fiction, which I thought was going to do better, one out of five um, awards. Uh, Holdovers, one out of five awards. Um, Zone of Interest, two for five. Napoleon, nothing. Uh, the Creator, nothing. Uh, Mission Impossible, which I didn't realize received any uh, nominations oh, went 0 for 2, uh, Nyad 0 for 2, Past Lives 0 for 2, and Society of the Snow, a net, another Netflix production. I, I can't help but wonder, too, if there's some backlash against a Netflix production. Now, didn't they? Didn't Netflix purchase the Egyptian theater so that their movies can get a theatrical screening to be eligible for the Oscars? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I can't help but wonder if, if there's a little bit of a backlash from that. Like, maybe they're not considered... In that same, on, on the same level as yeah. as the major studios, they better get, they better get ready because Bezos, Amazon did the same thing, and Apple's going to do the same thing. They yeah. all want their movies yeah. up for Oscars. They got they're going to they got to screen them. They're going to find York they're, they're going to find a theater. They're yeah. going to buy it out. Well, I mean, they, it up. these prestige movies are not. I mean, they, they do that, but they have a very small window. Yeah. And Maestro played here for one week at the MGR Troy, and then they come and go, and there's no box office receipts on the films either. So yeah, I, I do. And Spielberg was not happy with uh, yeah Netflix in 2018 about. I think a lot of that's why Roma didn't win Best Picture, probably because of the yeah. Netflix controversy. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's recap some of the key uh, awards from the night. 
Um, this year there were 10 Best Picture nominees. Uh, Oppenheimer won for Best Picture. Um, I'm not sure if I agree with it or not. Now, I, I saw Oppenheimer in my living room, so maybe that was a strike against it. Maybe I should have seen it in a theater. Um, I thought it was an odd choice to present the, uh, the hearing on whether or not Oppenheimer should be stripped of his security credentials. I thought that was a weird way for the movie to go. Um, so I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. I thought Nolan made some strange decisions with the nudity and sex scene in the movie. I thought mm-hmm. were really sort of odd. Um, but I, I don't know if there was any other film released this year that was better than Oppenheimer. One movie that I regret having not seen prior to the ceremony because it was nowhere to be found uh, was American Fiction. I really wanted to see American Fiction. It wasn't on DVD. It wasn't streaming. It was out of theaters. And so I went in blind. And um, But based on the trailer that I saw, I'm like, that looks really intriguing. And I can't help but wonder that had they maybe done a little re-release after it got its nomination, that maybe more people would have seen it. and, and, and Given a little yeah. bump. Yeah. I think yeah. so. It was released yeah. in December. Yeah. It, it lost a lot of momentum. Then it jumped back. And then yeah. it yeah. won that adapted screenplay. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it did win that. Yeah, but um, but as far as best picture goes, I, I I guess you go with Oppenheimer due to you know lack of a better option. What are your guys' thought? Did uh, Opp- Oppenheimer was was it? Uh, Oppenheimer is like sixth or seventh uh, on my list out of those ten. There, I, I, see, I, wow. yeah, oh, yes. I mean, I really like the film, but I do think it's deeply flawed. I I think that uh, it's got a very uh, bizarre structure. You you mentioned some of the things. I thought that was odd and uh, misguided as well. Yeah. And yeah, there, it, there's part of the in, in the brown community, Indian community, where they're like, "What is that? Like, wh- <laughs> co- like why is it in that scene?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went, yeah. yeah, that's that was. I, a weird I think it hits you over the head a lot. It's very redundant over and over again. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we get it. The bomb's gonna have consequences. We have yeah, to hear yeah. it over a hundred times in this film. If you took a shot every time they talked about the consequences, <laughs> you would die within yeah. an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I but, just turned uh, the page. I realized I, there's three more titles, Past Lives, Poor Things, and Zone of Interest. Um, so uh, if not Oppenheimer, what's your pick for Best Picture for 2023? I, I'm a big Scorsese guy. Killers of the Flower Moon's my absolute favorite. In that second viewing, I watched it first in the theater, and I wasn't sure if it was my favorite of the year. And then when I sat down, I'm like, I watched it again a second time. It really knocked my socks off. I started seeing and noticing things I didn't notice before, and just the performances and the writing and the themes and the, just the direction is just so yeah. brilliant and it's unlike anything Scorsese ever ever made it's, it's just yeah it's, there's a scope and a vision of that film that's extraordinary yeah I, I have to admit a line made me laugh that Jimmy Kimmel had when he said when he was watching Killers of the Flower Moon he had his mail forwarded to the theater yeah. and that's oh, yeah. a commentary <laughs> on the fact that these movies are too damn long three and that's hours one of the reasons I didn't see that it's one of the reasons I didn't see Irishman even though I sat down for a three-hour Oscar broadcast I, I didn't I can't sit down for a three-hour film and maybe it's just a protest on my part but Hollywood, enough with the three-hour films. Yeah. Give us two hours and some well, change. Scorsese's but, in a little bit of a string, though, right now. Yeah, but, but a story like that, Joe, Killers of the Flower Moon, it's so important and so yeah. grandiose. I'm forgiving on the three-and-a-half-hour mark, but I do think in the theater, though, they should bring back intermissions. And yeah. I know yeah. some theaters are actually doing it, and then Apple intervened and said no, and I'm like, no, there should be intermissions. Give a 10-minute, let people go to they, the bathroom, I get agree. drinks. did they do that for uh, uh, Hateful Eight? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I That's my least favorite. Tarantino movie, but I thought that that part was cool. Right. Yeah. Who, yeah. yeah. Who won editing? Uh, Oppenheimer won editing. <laughs> Hoyt van Hoytema. It, 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 it is well edited, it's gotta, but it is edited. that's got to be the the Danish yeah. for Billy D. Williams. I want right? I want to bring up Hoyt the editing. Yeah. I want to bring up the editing real quick. Why does yeah. best editing always have to mean the most cuts? You're no, right. It should. It should be what what makes the best flow, the best right. story. What's the most seamless? Yeah. And I, I thought the Killers of the Flower Moon I thought was better edited. It had yeah. been more yeah. seamless for. Oppenheimer was like cut, cut, cut all the time, which is impressive. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know the the rhythm. Yeah, yeah. editing isn't about having a five minute movie. It's about having, you know, telling a good, like right. you know exactly. Star Wars. Yeah. Best example. Great editing there. Yeah. 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 Editing made that got it a nomination and it won an yeah. Oscar for it. Now that's another criticism I had for Oppenheimer, and I was a little taken aback when it won Best Editing because when I watched it, I felt the pacing of the first hour or so was very choppy. It was, and, yes. and quick, quick, quick. Like there was no pauses. There was no room for thought. Like it was just line after line after line after line. And I saw on threads, uh, you know, the actor Dietrich Bader, uh, he commented on threads. He was talking to his son. They watched it and he asked his son, you know, what did you think of it? And he said, it felt like a three hour trailer. 
And I'm like, that is a perfect right. example of uh, description of Oppenheimer. It it felt like it just lurched from scene to scene to scene to scene. And and it, my my way of describing it is, I feel like the first cut of Oppenheimer was four hours long. Yeah. And they said, well, what can we cut out? Here's a pause. Cut that pause out. Here's another pause. Cut that out. And they got it down to three hours. That's what it right. felt like to me. So when it won best editing, I was like, really? It was, yeah. I felt like it was right. kind of edited with a machete. And some scenes don't connect well together. Yeah, I agree. I so. I, I agree with you on on the editing, but the actual visuals of that movie yeah. are what's oh, yeah. important. Cinematography is yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Oppenheimer for you, Andrew? For Best, best Picture? picture? Out of this yeah. list, yes. Yeah. And oh. the number two would have been Poor Things. Out okay. Of this list. Oh, so yeah. I was wondering about that. I know you really loved Poor uh, Things. Yeah. yeah. It would, uh, and 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 I, I saw, of course, Oppenheimer opening night in the theater, and then I watched it when it came out on Max with my dad. And of, and of, it's it's not the same experience as seeing it in the theater. I know. In a packed theater on IMAX. So, yeah. There 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 is a that movie I think. It's meant to be seen on a big screen, but with a lot of patience. Yeah. Yeah. Opp- yeah. Opp- Oppenheimer was six for me. Six? Yeah. Wow. What was yeah. number one for you? Number one, I actually, it was a, t- it's one and one A. I, I enjoy, because, you know, Robert pointed this out, Past Lives. Oh, I, wonderful. I enjoyed that movie. I, I didn't expect to. I sat down, like, I want to watch it's going to be one of those indie art. And I was like, oh, this is a great story. Yeah. Very moving. I love the holdovers. I had a loved mm-hmm. American fiction. And I love Killers of the Flower Moon, and I would have put Godzilla. I'm yeah. sorry to keep pounding this drum. <laughs> you know Godzilla what? I'm going one. to agree with you there. I liked Godzilla better than Oppenheimer. And I, I saw something today, I think, that said Godzilla was a great sequel to Oppenheimer. which I, 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 I read that too, time. yeah. <laughs> and then I would put, you know, Oppenheimer there. Wow, fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I'm fact, glad you brought I, it up. You know what? Actually, I think, poor, and Poor Things is right on its heels. Oh, I like poor things yeah. more than like right on Oppenheimer's heels. But yeah, so mm. Oppenheimer was, was six on my list, wow. and I like the Anatomy of a Fall more than yeah. Oppenheimer too. Wow, you guys, yeah. interesting Just, stuff. I agree with you. Six on my list too. Yeah. On. Okay. I mean, uh, director uh, Nolan. I, I don't think there's any surprises there. Nolan, you know, I Andrew. At the risk of you j- leaping over this table, <laughs> I'm not a huge Nolan guy. <laughs> I do think that The Dark Knight is one of the greatest movies I've ever seen, but a lot of his movies I think are great visually, but I have a hard time following the story. Um, yeah. Did you see Tenet? No, I did not oh, see Tenet. Because that's his most out there convoluted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even more so than uh, Interstellar, which... Uh, or Interstellar. Yeah. Interstellar, I was lost. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. And Inception, I enjoyed the movie, but I don't... That's like, okay, there's a lot of he's, holes in He's this, very... But, mathematical and uh cerebral yeah yeah and so that i think sometimes he does lose the the audience I, I understandably like, so i i yeah. i understand that and i accept that critique i, I like uh, south park called him out on it just because the movie's complicated doesn't mean it's good but i've heard the opposite too where uh, people have said uh you don't necessarily need to know what's going on to have a good time. So I believe in that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I will say it's deserved. Uh, Christopher Nolan was due. Yes. And yeah. And I have no problem with him taking home the award. Do um, you guys agree or disagree with that? I agree. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I, I didn't have a problem with Nolan. I. I. He was due. He. He was going to get it. Yeah. I, I'm going to say this. I wanted Scorsese to win. Yeah. I, I think he's a far greater director. I like Killers more, but yes, Nolan and. Has accomplished a lot too, but yeah. m- dating back to Memento. I'm a huge champion of Memento, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite film he's ever done. The Dark Knight, I still consider the the finest uh, superhero movie of all yep. time. I yep. agree. I would say Oppenheimer is probably my third favorite Nolan, third or just after uh, yeah. Batman or the Dark Knight. Wow. And Memento. I mean, and he had the momentum. The only one where the momentum didn't work was for Lily Gladstone. That mm-hmm. was when yes. I was sitting there going, okay, and the winner yeah. is Emma. Yeah, I thought. I, I mean, I hate to use this term, but I thought politics were gonna play a role in securing the Oscar for Lily Gladstone because all anyone talked about on the red carpet was what a big moment this was for indigenous people. And, and uh, this will mean so much for indigenous people. And, then and I'm like, wondering if that actually win. ended up hurting Lily. Yeah. It, but she, she had a great, she did. It was a fantastic performance. It, it was. And, and I'm, look, Emma Stone's brilliant in poor things. I said before the awards, 
whoever wins out of those two women, I'm not. It's not going to bother me. They're right. both extraordinary. So, and, and you know, this is she's early in her career. She's going to be in that crowd again. She's yeah. going to be in yeah. seated in that auditorium. Now, again. is she this generation's Meryl Streep? Is we'll she see. in line for that? Lily think? Gladstone. Oh no, I'm or talking about Emma Stone. Oh, yeah, I think oh Emma, yeah, yeah. No, ahead. I was talking about Lily Gladstone, oh, okay. but yeah, but Emma Stone. She, uh, yeah, she's. Uh, two two wins under her belt already. Right. She's four nominees she's already. Right, Hollywood royalty. Oh, she's fifty percent. Is she two for four? I don't she's know what her four. Yeah, she was. Well, she's nominated for La La Land, Birdman, Birdman. the favorite, right. the favorite, and now this. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Got about she's Birdman. she's Hollywood's darling she's, right she's now. She's fifty percent. Yeah, she, yeah. She and could do it. She's probably what thirty four, thirty five. If and she's that, already yeah. got four noms. That's, right. And if someone good. were to ask me, who's your current favorite Hollywood actress? Emma Stone's at the top of the list. I, I see really four things. Love her. Joe. Joe. She's so Joe. great. She's you so great. Weird. In it. You gotta get weird. You gotta get weird just it, one it, night. You wanna get nuts? <laughs> yes. Let's get nuts. <laughs> maybe maybe going with a, with a, maybe a little bit of rum. Yeah. <laughs> just loosen you up a bit. You never know. We'll, we'll see. I don't. I'm I'm so afraid to go through a Babylon experience where I got ten minutes into it and turned it off. And, turn my stomach but i don't we'll know see. if if that would be the same comparison yeah. I, I haven't seen babylon but from I, what i've heard of it i now. did and i i think poor things is in better taste okay all right <laughs> uh let's talk about best actor killian murphy oppenheimer i really think it's a no-brainer uh robert i know you said giamatti was yes right up i there. look at i'm a giamatti guy I really um, want, yeah but once that uh once he won the BAFTA and then that SAG, it was game over. Yeah, yeah. For, for, but what what a list though. Yeah. What a, I mean, what a yeah. and, and Giamatti showed so much grace up there, so much humility. Yeah. The whole, yeah. You know, he walked Divine yeah. Joy Randolph up to the stage, and yeah, he was moved. And he was he, crying yeah. in her award speech. Yeah. Well, this yeah, is a stand-up and, guy. Gee, and the interaction and that with, led to uh, one Nick of the Cage. other moments we got. Nick Cage. I would have oh, worn the glass eye. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> that was that was that one of the best great. moments. Yeah. Year. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Would I have done that? Hell, Hell yes. yes. <laughs> but he did it. Yeah, that was awesome. So, but yeah, in my mind, uh, Murphy was just a, a no-brainer. That was one of the, the odds-on favorites. Uh, supporting actor, obviously, Robert Downey Jr., again, well-deserved. An, uh, an incredible story, incredible arc for the actor to go from where he came from to where he ended up. And, you know, was, was Iron Man the turning point in his career that, you know, yeah. Made him popular with mainstream audiences, yeah, I back. guess. But uh, you just can't help but root for the guy and, yeah. and offer him congratulations. So, um, yeah, again, I think that was a no-brainer and, and uh, well-deserved. Uh, best actress, Emma Stone. Uh, she was genuinely shocked uh, when they called her name. You could see it on her face. I think she went up there totally unprepared for what she was going to say. Um, everyone thought it was going to be Lily Gladstone and, uh, Emma Stone secures her second win. So, uh, pretty impressive. And that win alone was like, okay, I'm going to have to watch the movie eventually, but <laughs> I'll watch it through my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Lily Gladstone losing was, was Robert and I at the blackjack table. I got two twenties, <laughs> twenty one. I went, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> We're going to the, Vegas. Yeah. What were the odds? <laughs> Uh, supporting actress again. I don't think there's a, a lot of uh, upset here. Divine Joy Randolph, her, yeah. her win, her yeah. speech, everything was so perfect, um, well deserved, and uh, uh, yeah, that was uh, one of the the better moments of the broadcast. Um, what else? What other ones you guys want to talk about? Let's jump to cinematography. Uh, Oppenheimer won for uh, cinematography. Uh, looking at the competition, you know, just just the. The whole story behind the practical effects when it came to detonating the bomb, uh, even even before I saw the film, I'm like, yeah, it's probably going to win uh, for cinematography. Even the absurdity. Could yep. we get a nuke? No, Chris. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, I don't know how they do it in England. Can we launch a little one? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, not, not no much. There weren't a lot of surprises uh, during this broadcast. Uh, everything sort of fell in line. You know who um, should have been in cinematography, cinematography. You know the theme. You know who I'm going to say, Godzilla. Yeah, I, I, it could have been in that. that it, it could have at least got a nomination. Wouldn't have won. Yeah. Well, it was nominated poor things. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, for Alcandre cinematography, from, Killers of the Flower yeah. Moon. Yeah, Maestro. I had never heard of Alcande. Alcande's a Netflix film. It's very well shot. It's a vampire movie. Yes. Oh, yeah, Augusto okay. Pinochet is actually the vampire. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yes. 
I mean, you never you. Uh, the the uh, Chilean dictator is <laughs> a vampire. I like this already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talked about editing. Um, Zone of Interest one for best international uh, feature film. I, I, I saw all five of those international films. And I think Zone of Interest was the strongest the of the five. Of yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what the uh, Academy tends to do with the best international film is. There have been times where people, an international film will be among the nominees for Best Picture. And what the Academy always seems to do is, well, we'll give the international film that award, and then we'll give Best Picture to one of our own. Uh, that happened with Life is Beautiful and films yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, music. Let's talk music. Uh, original score went to Oppenheimer. That was interesting. Yep. I, I don't remember much about the original score. But... I mean, it's very... He was nominated again. Yeah. You know he was nominated. Uh, John Williams. John. Yeah. John Indiana nominated. Jones, Dial Destiny. Is that his first loss? I don't right. know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, imagine saying you beat John Williams for an Oscar. That's that's something to brag about. Uh, we talked about best song, What Was I Made For? Uh, I love the song. A buddy of mine commented uh, that he thought it was kind of dull, and I'm like, no. It's, it's a very moving beautiful, song. I think. No, beautiful good. song. Yeah. yeah uh production design again i thought it should have gone to barbie but it went to poor things uh you guys agree with that best production yes, design yeah. poor things poor things. for me too but yeah. uh, uh barbie would have been second yeah uh, barbie yeah. would be my second i didn't yeah. i didn't see napoleon or killers but those got great but uh barbie napoleon, napoleon was impressive but i'm like you can go to france most of that stuff is still there like you didn't really have to you could go to versailles and like most of these pa- <laughs> these, these these palaces and you're like eh, okay yeah, and I just watched Barbie again the other day after watching the Oscars, and I liked it better the second time around. I saw it, the first time I saw it in the theater, watched it on DVD after the Oscars, and uh, it holds up upon I, I, re- repeated viewing. It's a very amusing film. I think it's going to have like a Grease type of legacy. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, where I think young people today, as they get older and have children, they're going to say, let's you know, sit down and watch Barbie. Com- that's an ex- excellent comment. It, it could yeah. be this generation's Grease. Yeah, I, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and, and what's interesting, and I don't know, maybe I caught more of it upon my second viewing, but there is some, like Greece, there's some adult humor in there. Like when they arrive at Venice Beach, and she's like, ah, neither one of us have genitalia. <laughs> right. And Ken's like, <laughs> I, I have all the genitalia. Um, so, yeah, it does have that uh, adult humor in it. But I Nobody's going to beat anybody gonna... off. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will beat you off. <laughs> yeah, there, it has those moments. And you're right. I think that movie's going to have legs. I think it's a movie that uh, today's generation is going to share with, with their offspring down the road. Uh, let's jump to adapted. Uh, we talked about Godzilla winning visual effects. Adapted screenplay went to American Fiction. I can't wait for that to be released on DVD. That's the movie I haven't seen yet that I and, really, and ba- really Barbie didn't win that. Watch. Like Barbie was, yeah. yeah. Everybody thought Barbie was going to win original screenplay, and they're like, no, it's adapted material. Then it lost all that momentum, and American Fiction won it. Yeah, because it was based on a doll. It right. doesn't make then, a whole it, lot yeah. of sense. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing American Fiction. Uh, original screenplay went to Anatomy of a Fall. I wish the Holdovers won that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Like I said, I, I think the strike against the Holdovers, I talked about this on the last podcast, is that it was just felt familiar. We've we've seen, you know, films have uh, trotted that ground before, and uh, it just felt familiar. Uh, and I, I think that's the reason why I didn't win the original, just because we've yeah. been down that road before. I I do think it does it better than many of the roads we've done before, but it is it is familiar. You can't Absolutely. deny that. Yeah. Now, Andrew, uh, you had said uh, that there were some movies you felt were left out of the conversation. Well, I, I was just saying may, there, there might, might have been some, and I, I was just going to ask if anybody. I know Robert mentioned earlier today we were texting that, you know, what 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 m- might have been some movies that we really liked that we felt didn't get any noms at all, and um, for me, it, and it was just I know. Uh, you're gonna roll your eyes, Joe. But that movie <laughs> last year, Bo Bo is Afraid, is such an original movie. Um, maybe I could have seen a nomination for original screenplay. I don't know. I don't know. Or like uh, best actor too. I think Joaquin oh, Phoenix Joaquin was great Phoenix. in that. Okay. Yeah, but that movie's very out there for it's, the Academy. <laughs> yeah, it is. But um, I I just would have liked li- liked to see that movie just get some sort of more recognition than it got just for being so original and out there and i'd never seen anything like it before yeah. but i think the movie's gonna have legs too i think that film's gonna grow a cult following and 
oh, the, yeah. the weird cult people are going to gravitate towards it. I will say this, and, and you guys are going to laugh. You might even think I, I, I'm not being serious here, but I'm dead serious. When I say that at least this movie should have been nominated for Best Cinematography, John Wick 4. I really laughing. enjoyed John Wick 4. I thought what they did with their camera movements and chore- uh, choreography and the fight scenes, yeah. I remember sitting in the theater going, wow, when the camera was like overhead and following John Wick from room to room like a video yeah. game. Going on top of that hotel. Yeah, it was wow brilliant it was beautiful and it's a shame that hollywood just doesn't even consider action flicks like the staircase that. was a bit absurd uh, yeah. he, he well, fell down it, it was absurd he fell down to like an a, empire state building worth of flight <laughs> like john that must be a bulletproof suit physics is physics man stop your fall uh, if you start on fast and furious i will leap over this yeah. table so quick <laughs> No, John Wick, you sort of expect certain things, and and that was very John Wick. But Uh, fight choreography, uh, I agree with you. But I thought the the lighting, the cinematography was worthy of some recognition. Great compositions, too. Yeah. Yes. I I agree. And and each each like major fight scene felt like a, a distinct set piece that all linked together or whatever. So, you know, that's one of the complaints I have about the Academy is is they get a little snobbish when it comes to films. Comedies are often overlooked, which really irks me. That's why Tropic Thunder that one year when it yeah. got nominated, I said, wait, wait, what? Yeah. Or when uh, when uh, Marissa Tomei won for My Cousin Vinny, everyone thought that Jack Palance had read the wrong name because they're like, <laughs> how dare a comedic yeah. performance win an Oscar? And I still see people today say, that performance was brilliant and well deserved, but at the time, people were like, "No, he made a mistake. He's a he's a doddering old man." And uh, the Academy tends to ignore comedies and big, uh, and also horror pieces. and horrors yes. is rarely acknowledged, yeah. rarely nominated. So, I, I wish did, there wasn't. Did no so one in stodgy. Francis for Coppola's Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula, get nominated for anything? It, it, it may. I think have. maybe like costume, maybe okay. maybe cinematography, yeah. maybe but nothing. Too big. None of yeah. the, 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 the big seven. Okay. But, so, you know, they expanded membership a few years ago to try and include more DEI. That's, that's a phrase I just learned recently. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, and, and maybe that's going to have an impact where more movies of wider genres are going to be recognized. But um, I think this, this most recent uh, Academy Awards ceremony uh, just continued the trend of nominating a lot of movies that people hadn't seen and, and the average American is like, I don't know what these are. Um, that happens a lot. You know, like I said, they, they get their screening in LA and New York and not a lot of people get a chance to see these movies. Yep. Give us a chance to see them. Yep. The, so. the speaking of Coppola, that's what I wanted to bring up. The, the one movie that I thought was completely snubbed was uh, Sophia Coppola, as you guys brought her up in, Awesome translation. Uh, she has a new movie out. Priscilla. Priscilla, and for whatever reason, yes, Priscilla and that movie did so well, and it did well in the box office. It, yeah, it, I think a lot of it had to do with coming a year after Elvis. People might have been maybe Elvis out on the Oscar committee, right? Plus, it didn't get the blessing of Graceland because it doesn't mm. put Elvis in the best of light either. Yeah, so well, like it had something yeah, to do with it politically. From, yeah, but it's also from, because it's from Priscilla's perspective. That's it's from her perspective. Yeah. yeah, but that movie, if you watch that film, it's on it's on HBO Max yeah. now. I watched it. Few times, it's so beautifully shot. It's so greatly acted. It's yeah. very moving, very empathetic movie. Which you'd expect that type of humanism you, you've seen other Sofia Coppola's films before. But I just thought yeah. it was like a best adapted screenplay, which is based on Priscilla Presley's book. You couldn't even nominate it for adapted. That was odd. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The hair and makeup in that movie was stellar. Like, how yeah. could you not nominate it for that? And even the lead actress who plays uh, Priscilla Kaylee Spaney is wonderful mm-hmm. in that. Yeah. I, I thought she would. Should have been the top five. She got a Golden Globe nomination, but that film, like, yeah, and they they snub her a lot lately. I think it has a lot to do with her speaking out against Hollywood, like a lot of the uh, stuff you've said before. She thinks Hollywood is uh, very shallow. She says that she has a hard time getting funding. Believe it or not, hmm. for her, Father Francis does too. They have to wow. work. They work yeah. other jobs. Francis has his own winery. She has her own fashion oh, wow. line. They use that to fund their movies. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen speaking of uh, speaking of Sophia? Have you ever seen her movie? I think it's called Somewhere. Yeah, and, that, I love that film. It's not it, that one is not really um, for everybody though. But I, yeah. I personally love the film. I yeah, like the arc in that film, the father kind yeah, of becoming a better relationship. Yeah. yeah, I just saw it for the first time uh, maybe last year. Oh, what you think? Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I really yeah. it's 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 a 
quiet movie. Yeah. It's, it's not spectacle. It's slow, um, if you want to call it that. Yeah. But it's, it's, but so, am, it's so sublime. I'm glad you like that, Joe. Yeah. 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 So, so let me ask you this question now. It's March 2024. We know we were talking about biopics. We know the Michael Jackson biopics uh, going to be made because Coleman Domingo's playing. Right. The dad. The dad. Yeah. Oh, right. father. <laughs> so are we talking about is Coleman going to get a nomination for supporting? Uh, and is that film, whoever's playing the lead, are we going to see any nominations for that for music? <laughs> isn't that his? Well, they isn't they that like that, biopics. These isn't that yeah. Michael's nephew playing him? I have no idea. Uh, are they related? I, I don't know. I thought it was. I tell you one thing, that the actor playing uh, the, the father is going to have plenty of opportunities to chew the scenery because <laughs> he was a character. So. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that, you know, maybe that's a topic for another podcast is uh, uh, predictions for next year's Oscars. <laughs> we'll have to and, come and back and to Marley's that. Marley's for next year, right? Bob Marley's one that came out. Uh, Marley film. I don't yeah. think that's got yeah. a chance, though, because they got, got creamed. It did well at the it, box office, but didn't do well uh, critically. Oh, uh, okay. But, uh, okay. All right. Well, I don't know. I, I think right now... Seeing the the release list, I think the front runner is uh, Deadpool versus Wolverine, <laughs> uh, which will bring to a conclusion like Lord of the Rings, one of the greatest trilogies yeah. of all time. We joke now. Trilogy. Watch what happens. <laughs> we watch. Well, you we got know. Gladiator two coming That's out in right. November. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. All right, so we'll revisit this topic a little bit later on, but we're just about out of time. Uh, really enjoyed this dis- discussion, guys. Uh, I'm just such a huge a fan of the Oscars, the history. I just like to see what's going to unfold. I love coming in on Monday to work and saying, did you watch, did you watch? And, and picking over all the moments and stuff. It's just something I enjoy doing. And I sure would love to be in the grandstands one day watching the celebrities come and go. I have a friend that's done that twice now. Lucky. Um, but yeah, that would be fun to witness now, he, that here's, spectacle. Here's one thing I'm asking. We're one year in advance. If Owen TV allows it. Could we open the studio up on a Sunday and live broadcast with the green screen? The Oscars in the studio. Uh, There'd be some legal wrangling that might have to take. We have one year to ask. The cameras would have to be pointed at us the entire time. Yes, absolutely. uh, Watch it on your second monitor on your computer. We we could watch with you. Um, I'll bring the candy and the popcorn. All right. Uh, Thanks, guys. Great discussion. And thanks, everyone who listened. And as usual, we're going to end with our little ditty. And we'll see you in a couple weeks. Good night, everybody. Good night. Come to the movies. Watch Charlie Chaplin. And put some sunshine into your day. Forget the hard times Come to the movies And try to laugh your troubles away